freedom. Sit up. Who else can heal all our sins and diseases? everybody today welcome to church how great was it to start church with worship today thank you so much to our band for leading us and thank you for joining us wherever you are especially if it's your first time it's so great to have you here my name's gareth and my name's lydia and we gather as a church together all across the world in venues homes and online if it's your first time joining us or if you'd like to connect with us we'd love to hear from you you can send us an email, message in the chat, or connect with our host team in your location. You can also follow us on social media at freedomchurch.cc to keep in touch with what's happening across our church. As a church, we're really passionate about building and growing authentic friendships and community. And one of the ways we love to do this is through meeting together outside of Sunday events. A couple of weeks ago, some of the men in our church gathered for a weekend away at the UK Hall. Woo! We had such a powerful time yeah. of life change, fun, brotherhood, and a bit of healthy competition <laughs> yeah. as well. Here are some of the highlights. in locations across the world so join us in praying for those events and for the barbarian men in our church and in the last couple of weeks we've also had an exciting announcement yeah. that we're planting a new church campus in charleston Woo! south carolina america Come on, Charleston. you know you can follow at freedom church charleston on instagram to stay up to date with all that's happening and 
If you felt a stirring in your heart to be part of the plant team in Charleston, there's just one week left to submit an application. You can send a message on the Instagram page if you have questions or head to freedomchurch.cc forward slash Charleston dash team to fill out an application. Hey guys, let's continue to be praying for this new location yeah. and for the team that's, that's going right. to go. Yeah. Right now we're going to head into a time of worship, so get ready and we're going to hand over to the band to lead us. Come on. There is a sound I love to hear, it's the sound of the Saviour's robe as he walks into the room.
How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song is end. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing high. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I got just one move with my arms stretched wide. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. All oh, that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I'm nothing else fit for a king, except for Let's declare them. Our prayer, our praise. Join us, come on. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy. I'm gonna lift up your soul. Come on. You've got a lie inside of those eyes. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those songs. Get up and Come on, my soul, don't you get shy. So welcome to every location watching this, our fire starters, whether you listen to our podcast. We're so glad that you could come and join us for church today. And we love getting to do church, don't we, guys? We love coming and worshiping together. We love coming and doing community together. We're so passionate in our church that 
that church is not just a service you attend, it's a life that you live with one another. We're meant to be brothers and sisters, so we're passionate about doing life together. So we pray that even as you are here, maybe for the first time today, that you get to do life with us as you come and hear this word, but also spend time with us after church. Now, we're in this series, Testing Rooms, and this is part three. Uh, So our church here in Raleigh hasn't heard the first two parts yet, so they're kind of wondering what this is all about. But for the rest of our movement, we're excited uh, to be lending our voice and coming and bringing something today all about this testing room series. And as we do this, it got me thinking about how I deal with tests because I, I think we all deal with them in different ways. I mean, sometimes that if you're maybe doing a physical test, you're like, bring it on. You know, we, uh, I talked last time about how we ended up doing a 50 miles uh, in 24 hours. I think I'm probably going to be able to get that in every message <laughs> to the end of the year, guys. We earned it, okay? Um, and there was this build-up to it where it, we had like a four-hour drive to get to our starting point. And it was like, bring it on. Come on, let's go. I had the t- It's like we wanted to be tested. It's like, bring it on. There was this nervous anticipation, but this excitement. Sometimes you can be like that going into a test. It's like, let's just get it on. Let's just get it over with. Let's just make it happen. Different people deal with tests in different ways. And I think when we hear this thing about like God wants to test you, there might be some people here today are like, yeah, bring it on. I love a test. I love being stressed. And other people who might be like, God, don't do this to me. Come on, I'd just make my life easier. Just, you know, just don't put me through this. But actually, there's something about when you're taking a test, when you, you have to step up to something. It's often when we end up taking in the most information because we've got to pass that exam. And there's something about it actually stretches us in a good way as well. Okay? So, I want to talk to you um, a little bit about today. Mine is all about the hearing test, okay? The hearing test. And we've been very blessed to have four children. And one of the things that they do when, uh, they're, when you've had your little baby in the hospital is they come and do a hearing check. And they will do this little sound that is so, you can't hear it as the output. They just put it to the ear and the, uh, and the, the nurse is just testing their, their hearing and seeing, can they hear? And I believe that God wants to do a spiritual hearing test for us today and come and say, are you hearing my voice? Do you know how to hear from me? Because I've got my radio here. Yes, kids, if you, if you not know what one of these is, okay? Uh, this is a radio. We used to use this to listen to music. Amazing. No, I just, just jokes. Um, but this is a radio, and, uh, and I think that sometimes when we are uh, trying to hear from God, I, I've heard people say before, God's just not speaking to me at the moment. And I think that that is a myth amongst us that needs dispelling that we need to almost get some reality and some truth on because God's thoughts for you, they outnumber the sand on the, on the shore. Can you even imagine how much God has to say to you, about you, for you? It's unimaginable. I mean, it's hard to fathom how much God, and yet we have this concept sometimes that, oh, God's not really talking to me at the moment. And I want to dispel that myth, all right, and say it's not about not hearing God. And even uh, on my radio here, let's see if I can get this to work now. Oh, here it goes. It's like we're listening. You can hear that. And it's, it's the static. And it's like there's no signal. It's like I'm trying, but I can't hear what God has to say. And I think that that is so, such a picture sometimes of how it just feels like there's no signal. And I want to tell you there's hope for you today. If you felt like that when you're praying sometimes or you're trying to hear God on something big, I'm going to tell you some things about how to hear God today and be confident of his voice. And where you felt maybe static before, like I just I can't get a sense of what God's saying. We're going to come and find out how to tune our ear to God's voice. So every single one of you, you don't have to be special for this. Every single one of us that has accepted God into our lives, and even those that haven't, you can tune into God's voice. It's all about, should we see what what station comes up? Okay. Oh, there we go. 
Guys, this is dangerous because I don't know what's going to come up on this radio. <laughs> okay. But there's something about we can find the signal, but we've got to tune into his voice. Okay? So this is a picture of what it's like for us. We've got to come and tune in. We've got to come from the static. It's not about that there's no voice. It's you've got to tune. It's not that there's no signal. It's you've got to come and seek and pursue. And that's what I want all of us to do today. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. Um, but coming and focusing on his voice, it's a choice that we've got to make. And I think sometimes it's like we're kind of like the, uh, the, the flesh within us is like a child. And it's like playing with the dial. Just, you know, like if you ever remember in the, in the car radio, just turning through the, the different signals and trying to get different radio stations. Our flesh is kind of like that. Find the next station. Find the next word. Find the next thing that I feel like God is saying. And we just want to turn and play. And actually, there's something of our maturity that comes to say, I'm going to focus in on the voice of God. There's so much noise in this world, isn't there? Directing and trying to input and influence us. And we've got to come and say, no, I'm going to choose that station. I'm going to choose that source and turn that dial. And even for some of us here as Christians, I believe that there's sometimes a shame attached to about how we hear God. Because I think it's like, I don't really hear God. <laughs> like, this is a bit of an awkward subject. And actually, can we just skip past this? Because I liked for other people to tell me what God said. And I'll just go with that. But actually, there's so much more than that for you. Every single person here listening to this message today, I want to tell you with confidence and authority that you can hear from God. There is a grace on every single one of us to get to hear the maker's voice, to be able to hear his voice. So there is a shame about, oh, actually, I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed because I don't really know how to hear from God. God is wanting to remove that today and send you out of this place with a confidence of his voice. So I just want to take you through a little bit of a, of a history, if you like, about uh, how we have heard God's voice, okay? And uh, this was coming to me in pictures, but for your pleasure, I did not draw them, okay? Because otherwise you might really misunderstand what I was trying to say. So I asked a friend of mine, uh, Nicole, to put these together for me. Uh, thank you, Nicole. Uh, and, and, um, and this is going to give a little bit of a concept of how humanity has heard the voice of God since the Garden of Eden, okay? So there was something about we were removed from God and we were distanced from God and God's voice would come and speak to the Israelites in extraordinary ways. So we just got our first picture here. And the kind of like the orange there, it kind of represents the voice of God. And it's depicted here in this thundercloud because what I wanted to get across was these extraordinary supernatural events that would happen for humanity to hear the voice of God. So I'm talking about Moses being out in the desert, there's a burning bush and he hears a voice of God coming from it. It's supernatural. And it's also terrifying. Almost every time you hear the voice of God in the Old Testament, there's people like flat out on the floor. They're trem they think they're going to die because they have had this interaction with this being, this God, that literally his voice as he spoke created everything that we see creation itself. Things came from the earth. Animals were made. The seas came. They, the, all of this came. Space was put in its place through the voice of God. So when humanity started interacting with it, it was terrifying. It was, oh my, he's speaking to us. Please don't speak to us directly. God, please, we, we, you know, speak to, speak to someone else and then let that person tell us. That's how the Israelites felt about it. That's what the voice of God was like for so many people. They were terrified of his voice as we, as we go through. And that's almost the continual um, response. So um, there's, this, there's this interaction where they get to hear what God's saying, but it's supernatural. Okay, it's, it's like so uh, amazing and miraculous, but it's also very rare. There's only certain individuals that get to experience it, that get to have these amazing interactions, which we find in the Old Testament. It wasn't like there was a burning bush every day that you're walking through, which made it so exceptional. So what happens is that God wants to speak to people 
in an easier way. And so Jesus comes to us. So we're going to look at this next picture. And the amazing thing is, is something that was so supernatural and extraordinary has now gone from being so natural. You can literally be with the voice of God around a fire. You can sit with him around the dinner table and hear his voice. He'll talk to you as a friend. Jesus' disciples weren't constantly terrified every time, you know, he'd say, hey, do you fancy a drink? It's like th- there was something very normal and there was something of friendship about the way that Jesus spoke. So you had this supernatural, extraordinary, miraculous voice go to being natural, normal. But do you know what the problem with this was? Is that you had to be around the person of Jesus to hear the voice of God. You had to be around him. And as we know from reading the New Testament, there are many scenes and moments where people are surrounding Jesus. There are these crowds straining to hear his voice. There's a story of Zacchaeus climbing a tree so he can hear Jesus better. There are people uh, who were pursuing and chasing him in crowds, trying to, because they wanted to, sorry, just come back to that last picture, trying to get to the proximity of where Jesus was. Now, Jesus was human and God. And so every day, if you're a human, what do you need to do? You need to go to sleep. So there was times where, you know, you're just waiting for Jesus to wake up again just so you can hear the voice of God a bit more. Imagine if that was our story now. It's like, okay, God's actually asleep right now. He's currently unavailable. Uh, So if you could just wait till he wakes up tomorrow, that would be great. But actually, God had a plan. He had a new structure, a new way of doing things. But before we come to that, Um, I just want to just share briefly the story of Elijah, the prophet, okay? And this is in 1 Kings 19. But what happens is that Elijah is in a cave and he has these experiences where... um, he, there's this uh, wind that blows through. There's even an earthquake. There's fire. It's basically the supernatural. You know that picture I showed you a moment ago of the thundercloud? It's like, and Elijah's expecting to hear God in these extraordinary supernatural ways. But we're not going to read the story right now. But what it goes on to say is that God does speak to him, but it's in a whisper. And this is a picture of what is to come. So there's an expectation. It's going to be supernatural, but God wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the wind. He was in the whisper. And this was a picture of what was to come. This is how God's voice and understanding of how he speaks was going to shift for all of humanity. Because what happened with Jesus is that as he overcame death, So he had been to the cross, he had died, he'd rose again. He says, it's better for you that I leave because the Holy Spirit is going to come, the helper. And this is going to transform everything because you're going to get to hear individually from God. So we've got this next picture. And now you can see even children that there's every single person in the world can hear God's voice for themselves in the most natural way, in the whisper within them. And I think so many people watching this tonight, you know that sense that I'm talking about, that almost whisper. We're not talking about the supernatural verbal voice that comes out from the bush anymore. We're not talking about the clouds opening. We're talking about the whisper of the heart. And I think many of us have experienced it as we listen to this message. But what we need to do is that we need to turn the volume up. Hey, wow, okay. (laughs) That was inappropriate. Uh, (laughs) Great timing, I knew this was gonna happen. Um, (laughs) But we need to turn the volume up. It's like the whisper, but we need to tune in to what God's saying. Country, I'll tell you, you solves a liability in America. Okay, but I want us to talk about then, well, how do we hear from God? (laughs) That was brilliant. (laughs) How do we hear from God? Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at this through his word, okay? And this is something, especially here in America, the word. 
we're, we're familiar with this. We know. We know God speaks through his word. We need our quiet time. You want to hear from God? Read the Bible. It's, it's something that is, it's a basic. It's something that is literally God's word coming to life. It's alive. It's active, okay? And it says in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, all scripture is God breathed, okay? All scripture is God breathed. And so as we read scripture, it's God's voice coming from, from, these, from these sheets, from, from this app on our phone as we open the, the Bible app. There is something so powerful and profound about these scriptures. It's alive. It's active. So as we read it, it's not just like, oh, we're reading this historical text today from thousands of years ago. It's actually alive and relevant today and to you, to every person, to your life. God knows where you can open it up. There is something of purpose even in that. And I believe, right, that we need to trust and believe more that God is speaking through his word. Because I've heard people say before, oh, well, God's not really speaking to them. And it's like, well, what about, th- have you been reading your Bible lately? Have you been going through the Psalms? Because go and read the Psalms. Go and read the New Testament. Go and read through the scriptures and then come back to me and say, God's not speaking to me. I think often it's just down to the basics got to come back to his scripture. So the next one uh, is through prayer. And in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, it says, call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you've not known. So it's like, as you're praying, I'm going to answer you. This is the promise of scripture. It's like you're not just going to send a prayer up and it's just going to kind of disappear into oblivion. Actually, there's something of God speaking to you in those times of prayer and giving you an answer. And what I love about this is that the hidden things that you've not known, it's like revelation, understanding will come to you. And I know, again, so many people, it's like, I was praying and God said this. It's times where God speaks. Okay, third of all, through preaching, right here, right now. I think this is, again, something that we're really familiar with, and I think probably a reason that a lot of people show up on a Sunday is that I want to hear from God through preaching. And Romans 10 verse 14 says, how can they hear without someone preaching to them? How can they hear? How can they hear what God's saying without someone preaching? That's why it's so important that we come to church, that we prioritize it, that we put it in in our diaries every week that we make sure we're here that we don't skip out because there is something about coming and saying I've got to hear what God's saying I've got to come and prioritize his word I've got to come and prioritize the the teaching that is going to come because it's one of the ways that God is going to speak to you and obviously for any of us that are a part of church we see this all the time don't we people responding it's like God spoke to me I can't tell you how many times that I've had people say over the years through their stories and testimonies uh It felt like that message was just for me today. So many times. It's profound. It's that I was the only person in the room. Because God has used that preparation, our time of prayer, us seeking out a word to come and speak to you individually. I I find that incredible. Amazing. Okay. Uh, Worship and fasting is the next one. So worship and fasting. In Acts 13 verse 2 It says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So they're worshiping, they're fasting. It means they're going without food. And as they do that, God speaks. And I've got to say, it's almost like when you're fasting. Okay, here's my my next uh, visual here. uh, I'm going to have to change stations, aren't I? Who knows what's going to come on the country. Um, but as as we come on and we fast, uh, it's like we put the th- we put the aerial up, okay, and that's what it's like. It's almost like the signal's so much better. It's a clearer sound. I can hear better. There's more clarity coming because of fasting, because of worshiping. The clarity is there. I've been there myself at times where I've been worshiping, and we're singing about something completely different. And then God just drops something into my spirit in a moment. And I'd be like, God's just start speaking to me. And it's about something completely unrelated to the moment. But God's voice is alive and active within those moments of worship. And so I want to encourage you. It's like, if you want to hear from God, get that worship music on in your home. 
It's so easy now. We can just go onto Spotify. We can get our playlist and we can worship and we can seek his voice. Okay? And then the next one is through the conviction of our spirit. Okay? Through the conviction of our spirit. This is John 14, verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. That means that the Holy Spirit, just as we saw in that picture, he is going to have moments where he prompts you. Well, I, I just feel that God is speaking to me at the moment. And again, if you haven't experienced this before, you're probably around Christians that have said things like this. But this is a prompting of the voice of God within you. It's like these convictions, my personal convictions, this is what I feel God's saying. And then the next one, through the prophetic. We believe in the prophetic in our church. It's in scripture. It wasn't just in the Old Testament. This is in the New Testament. And this is actually what to one of the early churches talking about the prophetic, okay? And trying to gear them up to say, you should eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. You should eagerly desire to prophesy. And sometimes the church is like this with spiritual gifts and with the prophetic because it's, it's worried or it's fearful. But actually, Scripture instructs us and tells us just the opposite. It says that we should eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit. And, and pr prophecy, that's the speaking out of God's voice by an individual, is, is uh, we, we're told to prioritize. It's like one of the best things that we can get. And it's like eagerly desire it, ask for it. That's one of the things I always encourage people to say. Go after it. Ask God. Say, Lord, I want this gift. I'm telling you, if my kids want something, my Nathan, he wanted a pet. And he asked me every week, he would ask me all the time, he, Dad, can we get a pet? Can we get something? And guess what? Dad gave in and broke, broke away because um, he got his leopard gecko. Okay, guys, it was a good ending to his story. Uh, not for me so much. But, he, but when you've got a kid who's asking you, is that how much more does the father want to give you the gift that's actually going to come and build the church. So we need to add, if you've never experienced that before, I want to encourage you. It's not just like, oh, just accept what you're given. The Bible doesn't say that. It actually says go after it. It's like eagerly desire it. Ask God for it. So we need to turn up our asking. We need to turn up our intentionality around that. And I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't have heard God through prophetic words. There's no chance I'd be here recording this message in America because God used the prophetic voice to speak to me, my wife, my family, and say, it's time to go. It's time to leave. It's time to take this next step. So God can use the prophetic in such powerful ways. And it's something, again, I've seen and experienced for myself. And it's something, a way that we can hear from God. And then another one that I want to share with you is through leadership. Okay? Through leadership. God has placed each one of us under authority, under leadership, and not just so that you can get some advice now and again, or, you know, they're there for your needs. Actually, to lead you, <laughs> that's what a leader's for. And so, God can speak through that leader and through that authority. And I can tell you that as a leader, it comes with a weight. That really, is, it, when someone comes and they submit themselves and they bring, them, bring something to you and say, this is something I'm praying through. It comes with a way. You don't think, oh, rub my oh, now I get to tell them what to do. Now I get to give them some instructions. It's like, oh, this is this is weighty, it's significant. You take it seriously because you know I'm gonna I'm gonna have to answer for this in heaven. I'm gonna have to say to God that I instructed what he was saying, not just my preference or what I thought was right. In Proverbs 13, verse 10, it says, through presumption comes nothing but strife. Or I'm just presuming that I've heard from God. I'm just presuming that I'm right. But with those who receive counsel is wisdom. If you want to gain wisdom, if you want to grow in wisdom, we've got to come to the leadership that we're under and submit ourselves. And guys, I've seen it all through the years in terms of the whole spectrum. People who are fully and ready on their knees, ready to submit and say, hey, I trust you with this. And those that are like, okay, uh, 
I'm, I'm not really open to talking about this. And as a leader, trying to lead people in those moments, it's exhausting. Because <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to encourage them in what I feel God's saying, but there's no, um, there's no grace for it. There's no willingness to follow that. There's no willingness to submit to it. And you might think, okay, Josh, this is great hearing from God, but what has this got to do with a test, with testing rooms? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Um, because I think especially when making big, life-changing decisions, we really need to hear from God. I think we need to hear God's voice every day, but we really need to hear from God when we're navigating big things, thinking about the future. And we need to know that we are actually hearing God's voice. Because I think out of all those ones that I uh, showed, we went through seven there, the one that's the most common is our personal conviction. That's how I heard from God. Yeah, no, I just, I just feel like this is what God's saying. God said. But we can get it wrong. I've got it wrong. And I feel like God's saying this. And I was oh, uh, actually, it turned out not to be right. And if we look at just this verse in Proverbs 12, verse 15, it says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. So the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. So it's like, no, this is what God said. This is my conviction. This is what I feel in my heart is the right thing to do. But we can get that wrong. We can misunderstand. We can mishear. We can be tuned in to the wrong station and get the wrong impression. In this verse in Jeremiah 17 verse 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things. He's sneaky. He's real sneaky and beyond cure. Who can understand it? That means sometimes we feel like we know what the right thing is to do and this is what God's saying, but actually we can be deceived by our own hearts. And I have seen people's futures go off the rails going, and even people leading their families into the wilderness in crazy directions because they got this conviction, but it wasn't tested. They weren't hearing from God, actually. They were tuned in to the wrong station. And it took them off into the complete wrong direction. And so this test is all about when you're hearing from God, it's like, do you weigh and measure it? Do you have a sense of confidence about God's voice for the right reasons? Because we all need to hear the voice of God. We all need it. We hunger for it. That's why we're here today in this church. We came because we gathered, because we want to hear God's voice. So we need to know that. But we've got to know that we're hearing the right thing. Because there is a lot of noise in this world. And there is even a lot of influences in our own heart. Things that can shape us. Things that we think, well, this is my priority and this is what I want. And I believe that God's given me that desire. But we've got to come open-handed. Because there's something really powerful about these two words that get put together. God said. And I've had meetings with people where they're talking about something big in their future. And they were like, God said. And we, all of a sudden, the game has changed in the conversation. Because now I've got to start coming against God in the conversation if I disagree with them. It is a power card. It's like, wow, well, God said. But do you know what we actually need to have the posture to be able to say is, I think God said. I think God said. And when we have that posture, it comes with a humility. Because if we've got this station that we've tuned in to, yeah, and we're thinking this is what God said, it's like we, we come holding on to it. This is what God said. And you're not going to take this away from me. This is my conviction. This is what he said to me. Can you see the pride in that? Can you see the, the, the posture that is incorrect within that? But there's something about when we come and we say, I think God said, we, we come with our, with our hands open and we come and say, look, I, I picked up this frequency. I've been tuning into this station. This is what I feel, but I'm open. Can I, can I ask for your input? Can I ask for prayer? And that is a totally different posture. And that's the test that comes your way. So you might get a conviction. What are you going to do with it? And it's hard, guys. It's really hard when we start getting a conviction about something we really care about. God said, now is the time. 
I remember um, someone coming to me a number of years ago and having a real passion for a charity that they wanted to set up. And we talked it through and they asked for input and guidance and, uh, and counsel to the leadership they were under. And we, we, they started it up and, and some things happened and, and went down. And I started to say to them, actually, I really believe that this is not the time. And you need to take a step back and prioritize your marriage. And they disagreed. They carried on with what they were doing because they held on. Now, this was my conviction. I said that I was submitted, but actually it was just because that was the right thing to say. I didn't mean it. And so they held on to it. And as they did that, in the coming months, their marriage broke down. Now they divorced and separated. And that's just a picture of what it can be like to say, they wanted to do something good. It was a charity. It was something that they were making a difference. But as they held on to, no, this is my conviction, it came at a cost. And every single one of us will have big, life-altering moments where we have, to, we have a decision to make, left or right. If we really want to go left and we, we feel like we've heard from God and he said left, it then becomes really hard to open ourselves up to could it be right? Should I turn the other way? But that's the test that comes to us. And it's a humility test. We have to come open-handed. And I want to show you uh, a way that this plays out in Scripture um, of where we can say, I think God said, and it's okay. It's okay to say that. So we're going to look at this story in Acts 15, verses 1 to 2. And it says this in Acts 15, 1 to 2. Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers. Unless you're circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. Paul wasn't happy, basically. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and the elders about this question. So, just to give you a little bit of context of what's going on here. The church has just got going. It's early days. And they're coming out from being under the Old Testament, all the over 600 laws that they had, practicing uh, different rituals, sacrifices. And one of the things that was so fundamental to being a Jew and following the God of Israel was to have a circumcision. And so what these Jews, it says about these certain people uh, came down from Judea, Judea to Antioch, they were religious and they were bringing this old into the new. Okay, they were bringing this thinking of saying, well, this is the way we've always done things. If you want to follow God, you've really got to do everything that Moses said. You've got to, to complete the law. And so there is this huge moment what wh would impact us today, thousands of years later, where the church decides what's going to happen. Are we going to keep practicing those laws or are we going to be doing something different? And they've got to break with something that they were all brought up in. Something that they were taught as being very important. This is so significant, this moment. It's going to impact the church for generations to come. Thousands of years, okay? So they meet together and say, well, what's it going to be? What's the answer? What are we going to do in the future of the church? Is it right to carry on in these laws and in the way of Moses? Or do we need to change now that we've experienced the grace of of Jesus? Does it change some of those laws? Does it change the expectation for circumcision? And so they have this meeting, this gathering, and they talk things through, and they write a letter in response that goes back to uh, the group that had originally raised it to say, this is what we've decided. Okay, so they have a council, they meet together, this is the decision. It's a really short little letter. But in this verse, it's, uh, in this uh, letter, it says this verse. It says in Acts 15, verse 28, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. And then they list three requirements that they say that they should continue carrying on with. 
But what's really interesting about this, okay, this is the Old Testament. There's going to be a hand writing on the wall, if you know that story from Daniel. There's going to be like a burning bush for like with Moses. There is going to be a voice that comes out of the cloud because this is going to impact the whole church. This is so significant. It's like they could get everything wrong in this moment. Make sure they get it right. If I'm God, I'm thinking, okay, let, let's not me- let me- mess this up. But God doesn't do that. He trusts that the Holy Spirit is within them and is going to speak to them. And it says these words, right? It seemed good. It seemed good. So Now, I, I'm going to probably be leveraging if I'm the disciples here. You've got to remember, these guys, they were with Jesus. They literally experienced the fire of the Holy Spirit coming and like landing upon them visually. I mean, they'd seen miracles happen in front of them and through them. These were holy guys. Incredible stuff. It seemed good. It seemed good. That's like the word seemed is like it's our impression. This is what seems the right thing to do. And so they're having this discussion that impacts the whole future of the church on a seemed good, we think God said. And there is a consensus that as they pray and as they discuss, that God speaks through that moment. So things have shifted big time, right? There's no more burning bush and thus saith the Lord anymore. There's a letter with it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. There's this consensus that happens. There's this agreement. And I can relate to this because even for us as a leadership team, we don't come. I'm part of the directional leadership team of our church and we meet on a weekly basis. And as we pray and we gather, we don't all kind of end up every week on the floor um, in the spirit going, God's just given us a vision. This is what we need to do. Often it's through discussion. It's through prayer. And then it's coming to an agreement together. And that's how God speaks to us. It's not like we are so holy and we hear from God and you don't. And somehow that there's this line that we've got that the general person doesn't have. We've got the same Holy Spirit as you. And we meet together, we pray, and then we hear from God together by finding a consensus. And if we're talking about some big change or some big move for the future about what we need to do as a church, if there's one of us that doesn't agree, we don't make the decision we find a consensus and we wait to have agreement that we are tuned in to the right voice together because that's so important to us. That's how we can check and balance that this isn't just my passion or my conviction. Actually, this is what God's speaking to us as a team. And that's what needs to play itself out in all of our lives. So what do you do with this? This message this morning, it's about having the humility to say, I think God said Come open-handed with your convictions. And this is how you can know that God is speaking. That you get a consensus, an agreement. And I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to just use a little visual here. Just grab that for me. Because I just want to bring what I've shared to life a little bit by talking about how we go oh, we're we're ready to go. Come on. The station is tuned. Um, we, we come and we hear from God. So I want to use a scenario and a situation where I might be saying, okay, God, I really feel like I need a new job. I've been working this job for too long, and I start to tune in. And uh, let's, let's come down to here. My tune, I start to tune and hear God. Program. In Raleigh. Oh, there we go. In Raleigh. This is pretty safe, right? So, guys, what it's like is when we are tuning into something by saying, okay, God, I want to hear your voice. And it might be that we are looking for a new job, okay? And so we're going, right, I want a new job. I've had enough of this job. I really feel God has spoken to me. Actually, he's got something else for me. He wants me to go on. He's got better things for me. He's got a promise for me. I think that there's better money out there. There's another opportunity. And we start to tune in. And we start to get this signal, okay? But then I start to read my word, and so I start to go through, okay, how's God speaking over here? 
And it's conflicting because as I start reading his word, I'm finding that actually what God is saying, he's saying, be patient. He's saying, hold on. I'm getting this story or this parable that is saying you've got to be faithful and stay where you are. And all of a sudden, my conviction conflicts against what I'm reading in Scripture. And this is how we can know we're hearing from God, because you can check it and you get a consensus with what God's saying. Rather than just going, well, I, uh, I've got this conviction, and then you think, okay, that goes completely against that prophetic word I had, where it said, you just need to stay where you are. This is your future. But no, my personal conviction is I need change. You start to get a consensus of what God's saying. But then you might say uh, something else. Right, okay, there's this church plant happening. Maybe it's in Charleston, South Carolina, for example. Shout out to our American sister campus. Um, and, uh, and you get a sense of like, I really feel stirred that God is speaking to me about where we're going to be planting next. So you get this conviction. Let's see where we go now. Okay, this is nice. This is real nice. Because we're in America, we can actually get Christian FM radio, which is quite cool. Uh, so I start to tune in, and I get this station that is saying, right, it's time to go. God's voice is saying, it's time to move, it's time to plant. Then I start reading my words. Come on, Tevin, over to you. Can you okay, we're grooving. And then I come over. And I speak to my leaders and I say, look, I've, been, I've got this conviction. This is what I've been reading in Scripture. And then I come and check it through with my leader. Yeah, we're working. We're working. Yes. Come on, let's just go back into worship now. Okay. Thank you, guys. That was great. Okay, it worked in the end. Um, and, and that's how we get a consensus of what God's saying in our lives. Okay. Because it's so easy for us to just go, well, this is my conviction. But it conflicts against what your leader has been praying for you. It conflicts against that prophetic word. It conflicts against the scripture you've been reading. But we need to say, okay, God, I'm willing to submit and trust you. And that's how God confirms his voice to us. And guys, I'm telling you, if you listen to this word today, it is going to safeguard you from some bad decisions in your life because I have seen people lead their family into the wilderness from getting this wrong. They disappear and years and years later, they're not following God, their families aren't following God because they had a conviction and they thought they heard and they got it so wrong. We need to have the humility to go, I think God said. So I just want to summarize this by finishing with these last three points. I want you to, if it, so if you just remember nothing else, this is it. Okay, guys, so this is what we're, this is what it was all about. Pursue his voice. You've got to go after it. You've got to actually try and tune in and hear from him. That means you've got to show up to church on Sunday. That means you've got to open that Bible. That means you've got to spend some time in prayer. If you've received a prophetic word, did you write it down? Go back through it. Hear what God has said afresh. Humility to know that we need others. You can't hear God without humility. You need to have the humility to know, I'm not just some special anointed person that has all the right convictions. I need wise counsel. I need to trust leadership. I need to trust God that he's placed me under authority. I need to come and submit my decisions and come and bring them past those that God has placed alongside and over me. And then confirmation by consensus. Consensus, another word for that is agreement or even harmony. Even that picture of the radios that we're tuned in and har harmonizing and in all attuned together as one. It's like I can be so confident that God is speaking. And as we finish up today, that's what I want for each person here. I want you to hear God's voice. Every single person, wherever you're from, wherever your background, whether you've been a Christian for years or whether you just became a Christian recently or even if you don't know God today, you can know his voice. And it is incredible. It's life-changing. It will impact you. It will encourage you. It will help you go on 
to go and do great things for his kingdom in the future. Because those that hear God's voice build his kingdom. Do you know that's one of the great tests of hearing God's voice? Is it kingdom-minded by the end of it? Does it build his church? Does it build his priorities? Or is it about me and what I want? But we, as a church, if we can go through this test and we can humble ourselves, we can hear from God. And do you know what? When we get that consensus, man, you're confident. You're bold because you know God did say. God did say. And now I'm confident. Now I'm confident and I can go at it with boldness and faith and courage and conviction. So I want to hand over to all of our location leaders so they can finish off and pray with you where you are. Thanks for joining us. Such a great preach. Thank you, Josh, for that message. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you're watching on Facebook and you responded or have any questions, please reach out and get in touch in the comments. Or if you want to get in touch from anywhere else, you can email us at hello at freedomchurch.cc.